Welcome back, part two, tutorial 16. So, what we have to do now is set up our NAS server. So I've fired off a Microsoft Remote Desktop here, and I've created a connection to my server using the, in this case, I just went for the public IP address, and of course our administrator password. So, how did I do that? Well, basically you just add for new, and then you fill in the details, but here's it all filled in. We can edit this. You put in whatever you want to call the server, the IP address, administrator and password. Now I should point out that tutorial 12, I believe it was part 3, covered Windows on NAS. Um, so that goes into much more detail, but we're just doing it very quickly here. Then I'm going to fire off my uh, session. As you can see, I've already logged in. I'll just slim down the window. There we go. And what I did was go to this web address. This would be a better way of seeing it here. Let me just put this in larger font. There you go. So you go to that web address and you download Stable ISO. And it asked me where did I want to save it. Well, I wanted to save it to the mapped drive. And again, tutorial 12 covers this in more details, but for the purposes of just showing you quickly if you've only dived in on this video what you do is basically map a network drive and then you fill in the details of your network drive and um, it would come up with Z but I've already used that would be the um, slash slash for the share that you're actually using um, in our case if I have a look at map drive Z you can see it was naslon 0201.service.com uh, .service .com, and that mapped our Z drive. So then when I go to our Z drive, I then downloaded and saved our core OS production ISO image onto that Z drive. That means our staging server is now ready and we can go and boot from the staging server. So we have our ISO image ready to go. Now we have our NAS set up. Um, we're ready to actually tell this server, our bare metal core OS on software server, to boot from the CD, the virtual CD device. So to do that, we want to go to the KVM console. Um, so I've logged into control here and I want to hit KVM console. And, oh, you may get this error. So, I've not established a VPN connection. So, let's establish a VPN connection. How do we do that? Well, here's my network. I've already set up a VPN connection here. Again, one of the other videos, I covered uh, PPTP and setting up a connection. So, I'm setting up a PPTP connection to um, IBM software. And once that's connected, there we go. Now, we should be able to get the KVM console. There we go. And that brings this up, and it's got a different root logon. This isn't the root logon for the server. This is the root logon for remote management. So we go to remote management, and there it is, root, and we can show that password, which will be this password here. Now, I believe I tried it earlier, so it should be there. Excellent. So now we have our connection here. This will come up with an image of the actual um, console. And to get to the console, we just click this, and it will download, sorry, let me bring that up so you can see, a JNLP launch file. So we're going to keep this, and then we're going to click on it to action it. There we go, open that, that fires off Java. It asks me, do I want to run it? I say run, downloads the application and runs it. And here we go, we get a Java KVM viewer. And this one looks as if it's gonna hang. Is it? Yep. This one's going to hang. So, this happens a little bit on this. There you go, it's hung, it's not responding. So, I'm going to kill that, force it to quit. 
Okay, you'll get one of these messages, just ignore that and forget it. Let's try again. Keep. Open. And this time we've got it. Okay, so that just shows you these things can happen for whatever reason. I, I haven't got time to debug why the JNLP didn't launch the last time. Um, but that now, when we hit return, there we go, we're on the console, keyboard, video, and mouse. So if at first you don't succeed, try and try again, I guess, is the, uh, is the way to look at this for the uh, JNLP file. So if at first you get that error, just like I did, just give it another go. So I've just paused for breath here to come back and list out the information we're going to need because we do need from that Supermicro console to provide the NAS mount information. So I've gone back on the portal and grabbed the, uh, the address of the actual server, the username and the password that we had. And I've renamed for safety sake the um, the boot file to be cores, uh, core OS dot ISO. So we've got that information and then we want to go into um, the actual machine itself. So as you can see there, you get a cut down menu until you go in to the actual device itself. And then on its actions menu, you get a much bigger menu. And we want to go to the KVM console like we did. That brings up our console and then we want to log in. Okay, now once you're in, what we want to do is add virtual media and we want to add a CD-ROM because we want to boot from a CD-ROM. Uh, there was me trying it out earlier. So this was the information that I was collecting. Um, and what you do when you actually bring it up, you'll have a blank one, is you basically cut and paste in the information that we had collected. So the server is going to be this. The path to the image is going to be um, slash I mean, n34582-1 slash coreos.iso. The username is IBM N34582-1 and the password we had was EJK EJK. I changed the two just to make it easy. So we're going to save that and you get this message. The image has been uploaded. Perfect. So if we now go to the actual console and we get our JNLP up in a minute. Okay, keep, fire it, open, fires off Java. Yes, we want to run it. Hopefully it'll run first time for us. Oh dear. Here we go again. Just like we had the last time. It's funny, it could be my host doing this to be fair. Um, so that's yet again, this is dying on us, so we'll kill it, force it to quit. I'm going to ignore the report. I'll leave that up and running. Let's try it again. Keep. Open it. Fires off Java. And this time it's worked. So it's one of those foibles. So if I hit return, ah, we've got some stuff on here. We see it started up. You can see here, look, it's actually fired up a USB storage device is now detected and it's there. So we have our virtual CD-ROM. You can see it here on this line, very, very clear. Virtual CD-ROM, it's all mounted. So we're now ready to boot from the CD-ROM. So our console is ready. We're ready to boot from the CD-ROM. So we now need to ask software via ticket. So you want to go into the support area and raise a ticket and ask them to change the boot order of this machine 
to boot from that virtual CD device. I'm going to do that. I'm going to raise a ticket, ask them to change the boot order, and we'll return when that boot order has been changed and we'll boot and show it here on the console booting into uh, the Core OS Live CD. Join me again in a minute. So there we have it. Um, I've now had notification back from Software that uh, they have changed the boot order and they have booted the machine. So I've gone back into our Supermicro console, KVM. Um, I'm now going to double click, whoops, there we go, keep. And let's launch our JNLP, open, Java starting, there we go. There's our console. Hopefully, we should now be, oh, it's done it again. <laughs> I don't know why it does this. Let's quit it. It's hanging on us. Ignore. Let's do that again and see. Keep. Launch. Open. Right, we're there this time. There we go. And indeed it has, it has booted from our ISO. So we now have core at localhost, it's all up and running. And now we need to carry out the next phase of installing core OS on the local hard drive. So join me again, that's the end of part two. Uh, we've collated a whole load of information there about how to boot from an ISO. So again, like I said, remember, this could be any ISO. This could be your Windows 2000, this could be SUSE, it could be anything. What we need to do now is a little bit of work to get the um, Ethernet cards enabled so that we can then um, SSH and FTP files over to this machine uh, in order to aid the installation and also get over, I guess, especially for CoreOS, um, our YAML files to do the install. But uh, effectively, that those are the hard steps in terms of getting this thing done. Um, the actual creation of your NAS, building the ISO or downloading an ISO, enabling that uh, to be booted from, and now rebooted from the ISO image. So we're ready to get going with part three.